Kiss me. Kiss me, Doctor. Yes. Can I have a couple minutes of time? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, are you having a, like an intense discussion or something? I don't want to. No, it's okay. We'll have more time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah so I, I was just talking to Doctor Miles and yeah. I was asking about some questions about North Korea and they yes. were like strongly recommend me to talk to you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> apparently, you work front line with the uh, U.S. government. Yes. Uh, with the uh, yeah. foreign issues, especially regarding the yeah. East Asia and. Uh, I'd, I'd like to just hear some opinions from you, like, um, how do you regard the situation? Because I know, like, before uh, the meeting with Trump and Xi, the meeting, you were, like, you were, like, thinking this is not a good timing for them right. to meet. And uh, you, ha you were having some opinions about it. Now it's over, and how do you see the, the outcome of the meeting, and how do you see the, the, the U.S.-China relation right now, at this moment? You know, I think we're, uh, you know, I don't think much happened at that meeting. No? Except it was just the start of a process. Yeah. So it was just an opportunity for, um, I think, President Trump to articulate the types of cooperation that he was hoping to get from China. Mm -hmm. And Xi Jinping's answer was, okay, we'll get back to you. So, so there was no, there's no consensus. There's no new no start. No constructive progress. No, with no, that, no, yeah. no. I think it was just the, it was the um, opening of the curtain. Right. Um, right. But the process is only just starting. So I don't think we have a good. I, don't, I think where. Did you hear my presentation earlier today? I'm sorry. No. Oh, you did. I, oh, I okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I had a very. Right. Lengthy they, description they were of all this, like talking yeah. about your yeah. lecture. I was like, yeah. um, I, I wish I was there. Um, I mean, I think we'll, we are. We're basically in a testing period now, where the Trump administration is asking China to change its North Korea policy and to change its trade and investment policies, and uh, we're going to have to wait and see what the response from China is, and then there will be an internal deliberation within the administration, the U.S. administration, to decide, is that enough, and are they, does that mean we can have a cooperative relationship now, or um, is that not enough, and it's going to be more confrontational with China on these issues? If but, that's a latter choice, yeah. uh, what's going to happen? On if, which issue? Yeah, yeah it, uh, on the North Korea issue. If the, the U.S. will impose secondary sanctions on Chinese firms and banks doing business with North Korean entities. That'll be the first thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. They're ready to do it. <laughs> so. Like from the uh, economic point of view first. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are like thinking, what if it really gets into a military uh, clash between North Korea and the U.S.? How? How? What's the chance of it? Do you think? I think it's still pretty low. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it depends. I think. Uh, um, I think on uh, on a lot of these issues, and I, I described this earlier this morning. Like I don't, I don't think the administration, I don't think the Trump administration has a very detailed plan yeah. where they know. Okay, mm -hmm. like I think they know what their near term strategy is, and their near term strategy is to apply maximum pressure on North Korea. Yeah. Economically. But you and, do and think he has a narrow point of view of what's going on within Asia, and he doesn't have enough people to advise him with the Asia strategy. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think he's. I think they've been very narrowly focused on North Korea. Yeah, without uh, sort of a more comprehensive policy. Right. Um, I'm going to talk about next. I'm going to be talking. I don't know if you're staying for the next session. But, I, I will. Um, okay. I'll be talking a little bit about how I interpret their regional strategy, mm -hmm. but um, I don't think it's uh, certainly different than the Obama administration, and I don't think it's particularly effective, so... Uh, yes, because Obama kind of put everything on a pause, pause yeah. and it, it just stopped there, and with, with the strategic tensions towards mm -hmm. North Korea, yeah. and people are thinking if uh, Trump is going to do the same thing. I think we'll see. I think, you know, I think they'll... I think what they're trying to do is to, um, again, I think they have a short-term idea that they want to exert 
pressure, more pressure on North Korea than has ever been applied, and yeah. see what happens. Pressure through what? Through economic coercion. But more I think they like want to cut pressure off on China China's. to well, that, North Korea, right? Yeah, well, both. Instead yeah. of, yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Because, because basically all of North Korea's trade and finance goes through China. Right. So there's no applying pressure on North Korea is China applying pressure on North yeah, Korea. And, and, and uh, so I think Trump is saying to Xi Jinping, uh, you can do that voluntarily or oh, we're gonna we can do it on your, yeah. All right. uh, and the, but the pressure that the United States is asking China to apply is only to comply with the UN Security Council resolutions that China itself negotiated and voted to support. Yeah. So this is not the United States is not asking China to do anything that it hasn't already agreed to do. It's asking it to live up to its commitments right. to implement UN, which it hasn't been doing. It's been actually quite poor at implementing UN Security Council resolutions. So as it relates to North Korea, so I think the idea is if the United States and China apply much more pressure on North Korea. Uh, how might it change the dynamic inside North Korea in a way that could either open up opportunities for negotiation or um, destabilize the Kim regime yeah. in a way that could produce a new leadership in Pyongyang that might be more willing to cooperate with the international community. So I think those are the potential pathways. Though people don't tend to talk about regime change and polite company, but... Yeah, people will think it's going to be in the long term, not like something that's right me. Yeah, yeah, but it may happen very quickly, which is yeah. why... Um, why do you think so? I feel like if something like that changes, it has to get some military force involved in order to do that. Uh, yeah, there's different ways to do it. Yeah? <laughs> there's different ways to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, the other thing is there could be an internal process within North Korea where the people around Kim Jong-un decided that the direction he was taking the country was not beneficial to them. Do you see a sign for that? That sounds like a, a like just a gas out of nowhere. <laughs> I yeah, I mean, it's talking to someone. The problem is that the here's the, here's the choices facing the United States, okay? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of risk and uncertainty associated with pressure and I understand China is very concerned about that, very concerned about instability, mm -hmm. very concerned about the potential conflict. Yes, definitely. Everybody agrees with that, okay? Mm -hmm. What they don't agree about is the alternative future of North Korea with a large arsenal of nuclear weapons and intercontinental ballistic missiles. Mm -hmm. I think the view from China is probably we can live with that. It's not ideal, but it's better than the instability, instability and war yeah. and all that uncertainty. Right. I think that where the debate is, I think there's a real debate in the United States. It's less clear of those two options which mm -hmm. one is worse for the United States. I think there's, there, there is enough... I think people think that there are chances through which the nuclear threat can be eliminated in North Korea that it may be a risk worth taking. Mm -hmm. Even though the risks are very high, there's mm -hmm. also... it's. The risk and the uncertainty is perhaps preferable to a future of a nuclear-armed North Korea that could strike the United States. So that right. is that is unacceptable, right. and so we cannot accept that. So we're gonna we're gonna have to see whether um, changing the dynamic in this other way. But we saw that happen a lot of times, like elsewhere, like Middle East when you feel there's a potential risk somewhere in yes. the country and you just kind of like, let's just stir it and yes. to make it unstable and yep. see what, what, what right. happens and it's just disaster. Yes. Nobody will just like go after that and wipe the butt. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. So I don't think that's what people want to see either, right? Do you think the U.S. is still want to go with that option that they went so many times before and it, it resulted in Bad and I don't think the U.S. Well, the situation, will right? So the, the right, the I'm not advocating this, but the people who do, I think, would argue that the conditions under regime change or collapse in North Korea are not the same as Iraq or Syria. 
that you don't have these sectarian divides that have been the ultimate problem. Okay. Um, You have more intense... I mean, the situation in Syria and Iraq is as much... You have the sectarian divides, and then you have the um, rivalry between Saudi Arabia and Iraq.